Men, on average, swipe right on roughly half of all profiles. Meanwhile, women, they're swiping right on only the top 5%. I very much agree with Weef Waffles on the premise that dating apps have gotten really competitive. What I disagree is with... Oh. So today we're going to be analyzing the latest Wheat Waffles Tinder experiment and we're going to get to the bottom whether online dating is really as brutal as he says it is. All right, so if you're not familiar with Wee Waffles, he's probably one of the most popular black pillars. And one of the big things they believe is that online dating is close to impossible for the average guy. So this is a Tinder experiment that he released. This got 116,000 views in less than a week, which is pretty insane. And the title is Tinder Experiment Proves How Brutal It Is For Average Guys. So we're gonna really analyze this and go deep and see whether he's actually speaking the truth and what's the deal with this Tinder experiment. Guys, online dating is like trying to find water in a desert for men and supermarket shopping for women. In this video, I'm going to show you the results of a Tinder experiment of an average, maybe even above average guy. And by the end, I'll prove just how bad these apps have gotten and just how much the odds are stacked against you as a man. Anyway, this is our male subject and here's a few more photos. To give a little bit of background, this man is actually an article writer who I've been chatting to on Instagram recently, <laughs> and he's made a kind allowance for me to use the data he's collected off his own Tinder profile for this video. He describes himself as average looking, maybe even a bit above. I'd largely agree with this and think he falls somewhere around the 6 out of 10 range. He's from Canada, which is where he still lives and is- I would agree with that, he's probably 6 out of 10, although his photos, I would say, maybe are 4 out of 10, because they're really posed. Uh, he looks just like a shy, nerdy guy. If you grew out some facial hair and did more activity photos, he would look a lot better. Based in a medium-sized city of 1 million people. He's 22 years old, he ran the experiment for 4 months, and as shown by the thumbnail, he made over 16,000 swipes. There's two more things that are noteworthy. One, he purchased Tinder Gold, which for anyone who doesn't know, is the paid version of Tinder that gives certain bonuses and makes your profile shown more in the card stack. Okay, so right here I want to comment on that. He did 16,000 swipes and he has Tinder Gold. That's a total waste of time. With Tinder Gold, you get to see the girls who already like you. You know how many swipes I do with Tinder Gold? Zero. You don't need to swipe. All the girls who like you show up on your stack and then you can just match with them, right? So that was a total waste of time for him to be doing swiping. It's completely unnecessary when you have Tinder Gold. And two, he's fairly tall, six foot three to be precise. I found this very noticeable by looking at how often he towers over people in his pictures. So this factor will likely have influenced his results. Now let's get to the profile itself. He used three pictures on his account. The first, just him with a dog. The second, a holiday picture in front of what I believe to be a frozen waterfall. And lastly, just a basic photo sitting down. Okay, let's analyze this. So like I said, this guy, I agree with Weave Hoffles, this guy's a 6 out of 10. His profile output a 4.5 or 5 out of 10. The first photo is decent. Uh, but the second, third photo are way too posed, right? Especially the third photo. Look at his body language. He's really, really meek, right? He just seems like very much a nice guy, which may be good, you know, for marriage, material type of shit, but for getting matches on Tinder, not so good. He needs to grow out some facial hair and get more activity photos. So again, this guy, like he's a six out of 10, his profile is below that, but he can actually have a much better profile. So he definitely, definitely has not maxed out what his potential is with the profile. Also three photos is a little bit on the low side. You want at least four, but closer to five or six. With a clear view of his face. As for the bio, real basic, the name of his university, which I can't say in the video, his height of course, because why wouldn't you if you're six foot three, and then just a few hobbies he takes part in like snowboarding and hiking. Last two things, his age preferences were set from 18 to 25 and his maximal allowable range. Okay, so that bio fucking sucks balls. Like uh, these black pillars, they treat like the bio, like it's a job resume, right? Like, that's fucking super boring. Like there's nothing interesting about that bio at all. He needs some sexual flirty lines like I use in my bio, something that's polarizing, something that stands out, something that hooks the girl. So I agree with Wheat Waffles' premise that online dating is really competitive. Uh, but I disagree with the conclusion is that the average guy's fucked. That's not really true. This guy is definitely far from doing everything that he needs to do. If I was his coach, I would make him a much better bio that's much flirty, has more hooks in it. I would get some more activity photos, right? And look, make it seem like he's not just some really nice, timid guy, but he's actually a guy that can fuck the shit out of the girl. Which was set to the max of 100 kilometers. 
So, without wasting any more time, now let's get to the actual results. Again, over the course of four months, he swiped a grand total of 16,000 times. Of these 16,000, he swiped right. He can swipe 100,000 times, 500,000 times. It's not going to change the outcome drastically, right? So, yeah, you know, when you swipe on a girl, maybe you'll show up on her feed, but it's not going to change the outcome. Like, I do close to zero swiping. So, with Tinder Gold, it's not necessary. The real point that he needs to max out his photos, not his amount of swiping or liked a little under 8,000, which means he swiped left or disliked roughly the same amount, giving a like rate of 47.3%, pretty much half and half. Now, for the nearly 8,000 women he liked, here's the kicker, just 290 of them matched. So the other 7,000 or whatever didn't. They either did not think he was good enough or they simply didn't see him. This is an abysmally low 3.7% match rate. And if we average this figure out over the entire duration of the experiment... So one thing I want to comment, like the 3.7% match rate, who gives a fuck? I don't care if it's 1%. What really matters is the total amount of matches. 290, that's not bad. If he has a good text game, right, he can probably get, I don't know, let's say 10, 20 of those out on a date. And if he has a good game on the day, he can bang most of them. So that's like 10 to 20 girls that he can sleep with, which is not terrible, uh, especially given the fact that his profile is highly suboptimal. We find he's grappling with just 2.5 matches per day. Now on to message conversations. Of the 290 women he matched with, 99 of them had at least one message being sent or received, 87 of which he made the first move while the remaining 12 had the woman opening on him. Which is actually pretty good, given the fact that most women never ever ever reach out with the first message on dating apps. Either way, this shows 191 of his matches served absolutely no purpose besides collecting dust as no- Right, but what is his opener? This is what I want to see. Since he has a very suboptimal profile, I would venture to say his opener, his text game is also suboptimal. Why would a guy have really good text game who has a suboptimal profile? Thing got initiated. However, if I'm honest, I think our subject could have done a little better here. I think if he messaged at least 250 of his 290 matches, he'd still have a pretty large funnel to work with before going into trying to arrange dates. And this still gives a fairly large allowance of 40 for any women he swiped on by mistake or took another look at their photos after matching and found they weren't as attractive compared to his first glance. Anyway, carrying on with his 99 messages. Right off the bat, 31, that's almost a third, either left him on red or never even opened his initial message, leaving just 68 conversations for him to work with. The key piece of data that's missing here is what was his opener. If his opener sucks, that can be completely different than a really good opener, right? So that's the big missing, missing piece of data. Then of these 68, a further 40 women ghosted him after a short message exchange. Our subject also gave up on 17 conversations himself, which leads him being left with just 11 phone numbers where he- Again, we have no idea what his text game like, but I'm assuming it's suboptimal, right? Especially if it's not being shown. So yeah, I mean like your conversion rate will definitely heavily vary based on how good your texting skills are, which is something we can't see here, which is a crucial piece of data. You can carry on texting over WhatsApp or iMessage. Finally, of these last 11, after all of this effort, after four months of painstakingly swiping over a hundred times a day. But he didn't need to be swiping a hundred times a day. He didn't need to do any kind of swiping. So this is like so dumb, like who cares how much he swiped? He didn't need to do any of that. Like if you have Tinder gold, it just shows you all the girls you like. Every day, our guy was rewarded with just three dates. So as for the other eight girls, they either gave up on texting, declined his date offer, or simply never turned up. And just to be clear, there is no silver lining to this man's efforts. None of his three dates materialized into anything. So that means his dates, his game sucks. He met up with three girls and nothing happened with any of those. Yeah, like, you know, you're not going to hook up with every girl you meet up with, but this is like an extremely low ratio. So I'm assuming his text game sucks and his in-person game sucks. And because like we, me and we waffles agree, that's very competitive. All your shit has to be on point. You don't have the luxury of just showing up to a date and just being like a retard and be like, oh, hello, it's nice to meet you. Like, no, you have to have all your shit be on point. Long term. So besides some dating experiences and a reminder of the futility of online dating as a man, we can safely say that this whole ordeal had been a complete waste of time. One more time, the results in short form. Of his 8,000 likes, just 3.7% matched. Of this 3.7%, he got numbers from again, 3.7%. And of this 3.7%, a little over a quarter led to actual dates, for which finally a grand total of 0% led to anything long term. 
Anyway, that's the experiment, and now for the remainder of the video, I'm going to be analysing these results and telling you what the key takeaways should be. But before I do that, if you appreciate the time it's taken to prepare this data and explain it in an easily digestible way, then now is a good time to press a like button and leave any thoughts you have in the comments below so far, as it helps the YouTube algorithm. Now on to the analysis. First, you've probably heard the term hypergamy being thrown around quite a lot on various channels specialising in dating. Well, let's set a few things straight about our guy used in the experiments. For anyone who doesn't know... Just look at his dog shit body language. Like, he seems like a very meek guy. That's not how you want to sit. You want to be relaxed, take up space, right? So yeah, this shows me that the strategy this guy is following probably sucks balls. Hypergamy is the idea that women only want to date up, particularly in terms of looks, height, status, job, wealth, lifestyle, social circle, and so on. Well, when we take a look- Hypergamy applies to both genders. Men want to date up as well. What man is like, you know, I want a girl uglier than me. No, every guy wants a girl that's hotter than him, just sometimes they have to settle. So it's something that applies to both genders. Look, it's our guy. He literally, literally ticks all the boxes. And I'm not saying any of this to blow smoke so you can leave your wheat waffles as a simp comments elsewhere. This is simply making a point. We've established he's average to slightly above average in the face. He's six foot three. He's college educated. He has- Okay, being college educated gives you like zero fucking status. Like, does he think that being college educated gives you some kind of an edge? Like for Tinder and hookups, it makes no fucking difference. Status is like if you have a million followers or you're a celebrity or you know you own a club, that's status. Being college educated has zero impact on your success. That's not status. A reasonable status job of being an article writer, it's clear from his- Again, no one fucking gives a shit. The girl doesn't care if you're an article writer, she doesn't care about that. None of that makes a difference. You're gonna be, she's gonna be talking to guys who have way better jobs than her. That's not the angle you wanna take. Like, oh, look at me, I'm an article writer. Makes zero fucking difference. Expensive hobbies such as snowboarding and boating, he's been raising a family of the middle wealth bracket at the- <laughs> Does he think that because in the bio she says she snowboards, that the girl's like, oh, he's wealthy? And yeah, it makes no fucking difference. Very least, possibly even upper, these hobbies also tie in with showing he has a good lifestyle. And lastly, it's clear from his Instagram he has a good social circle too. Therefore... Really? This just looks like a bunch of dudes hanging out in a hot tub. Like, how's that a good social circle? In theory, given all these things, it should be that he satisfies the hypergamy of the vast majority of girls out there. It's a matter of fact... In no, because those pictures suck balls. The title of this video, I use the words Average Guy Tinder Experiment. However, in reality, this guy is anything but average. He has better than average points in every category. Yet despite this, 96.3% of women out there did not match with this guy. And if I'm honest, I'm not even surprised because I know dating apps have gotten this bad. And this study I found confirms this. Men on average swipe right on roughly half of all profiles they see. Meanwhile, women, they're swiping right on only the top 5%. So I want to be clear. I very much agree with Weef Awfuls on the premise that dating apps have gotten really competitive. There's no disagreement about that on my end. I've done a whole bunch of experiments myself. What I disagree is with his conclusion, which is dating apps are futile for the average guy. Like, no, I have many clients who are average. I would say I'm slightly above average. I'm nothing special. And we all do quite well, right? Again, because we followed the optimal strategy, which is having good photos, having a good bio that hooks the girls, and following optimal text game. Of guys they find attractive. So in simple terms, if you're not in the top 5% of men on dating apps, you may as well forget using them. This is why I want- This is, this is pure nonsense. I completely disagree with this. Like, oh, it's futile. If you're not in now this Chad, dating apps are futile. No, that is not the case. Like you can get the results. Yeah, you're not going to get the same level of results as a giga Chad, but who cares about swiping? You have Tinder gold. You don't have to do any swiping. If you learn one thing from this channel, I ask for nothing more than to stay off the dating apps. Just stay off them. There's far better alternatives. Check my last video for simple follow the chart guidance. It's funny, people out there say my channel is depressing. But guys, I promise you, there is nothing in this world more depressing than going on a dating app and having swipe after swipe reinforcing a potentially false belief in yourself that you're unwanted. I've been there myself, but now I've not used dating apps in over a year and I'm in a much better place in every aspect of my life. These apps are rigged against you and can give a sense of reality that's totally different compared to dating in the real world. Interestingly though, if you have female friends, they'll experience the polar opposite to men from online to real life. These apps are designed for women. 
in real life, women might get one or two. Actually, the apps are designed for men to spend money. The women are just the prop. The women are the thing that gets men to spend money. So the point of the dating app isn't to placate the women, it's to get men to spend as much money as possible. Compliments every so often. But when they log on to dating apps, it's like they transform into the hottest woman in the world. And this is true for even average to below average women. Every one of them is getting hundreds of matches and heaps of attention. And if you're a guy, don't for one second think you are or will be the exception to the rule. Unless, of course, you genuinely are in the top 10%. But the point I want to make is don't delude yourself into thinking you're a top 10% guy when your Tinder results show you're obviously not. Remember, if this man- This is what I find so problematic about this advice is because it's gonna lead people to the incorrect conclusion. So a guy might have shitty photos, shitty text game, he might get on Tinder and be like, and then he's like, why am I not getting matches? He finds wheat waffles and he's like, oh, the issue is that I'm not in the top 5%, right? Instead of optimizing his profile, optimizing his texting, optimizing his strategy, which is what would have gotten him results can't get decent results online, then chances are you won't either. And yes, although the pictures he used weren't the best photos in the world, I know most of you have pictures that are way, way worse. I know this because some of you have sent your Tinder profiles to me on Fiverr. If you think your shirtless mirror selfies will cut it, then think again. I also know a good 90... Yeah, uh, if you're Jack, your shirtless selfie might work. I have a shirtless selfie that I use. I get plenty of matches, right? So I would not consider myself top 5%, right? Uh, maybe top 5% in the dating community or something like that, but not top 5% overall with men. There's way better looking guys than me, right? And I still do quite well, again, because I have the optimal strategy. 7, 98% of you are nowhere near as tall or have as an exciting lifestyle. I could go on. This is so funny that he thinks he has an exciting lifestyle, like as if the girl knows that. Just because he puts snowboarding and some other activities, the girl is supposed to be like, oh, he has an exciting lifestyle. Like, again, your bio is not a resume. You can be like, oh, I'm the coolest guy ever, and the girl will think you're lame, right? Because you're trying to show in her face. She has to discover it for herself. Maybe she's browsing through your Instagram, she sees photos of you doing cool shit. That's one thing, but you're just putting it in your bio like a job resume does absolutely zero to help you. To put it in as simple terms as possible in this last point, here on your screen is a basic cost-benefit analysis chart summarizing the outcomes if you decide to try your luck at dating apps as an average guy. Starting with the positives, you'll get some text game experience, some first date experiences too if you're lucky, you'll build a very thick skin as you learn to tolerate the endless flakes and ghosting. Lastly, dating apps may give you hope as you think you're edging closer to the- You can also bang a lot of hot girls with minimal effort. Relationship of your dreams. Now for the negatives, or what I like to call reality. First and foremost, it'll be a huge waste of time. These apps are almost as bad of a time sink as watching TikTok or being addicted to video games. These apps will also decimate your self-esteem. Okay, so the huge waste of time thing, pure nonsense. You don't have to do any swiping like already established. And like, you know, who the fuck is going on a Friday night at 8 p.m. like, oh, I gotta do my online dating apps. No, you're doing, I'm doing my dating apps while I'm taking a shit, while I'm stuck in traffic, while I'm in between sets of the gym. So you can use dating apps when you have nothing else going on, when you're killing time, right? So they don't have to be a waste of time at all. As you face rejection after rejection, I'd like to point out that Tinder was originally designed to be like a slot machine, rewarding you with dopamine each time you get a match. And we all know how destructive these machines can be. They will also- So the negative self-esteem, it can happen, but if you want to be successful at online dating and game in general, or sales or business, is you have to separate your self-esteem from your external results, right? So whether you get 100 matches or zero matches, it should have no impact on your self-esteem. You need to have that shield and that barrier. And if you can't do that, you're not gonna be able to be successful at dating in general. You're gonna hate cold approach, you're gonna hate every type of game, because again, you have to separate your self-esteem uh, from your external results, but it's very doable you a lot of money if you buy Tinder Premium? This is an important point. I guarantee you 100 times out of 100. Paying $30 a month for a gym membership will always bring better long-term gains. Oh my fucking God, why can't you do both? Like $30 a month, like that. If $30 a month for you, like if you have to decide between a gym membership and Tinder Premium, then I actually think you should forget about both of those and focus on your business, right? Because then you're broke as fuck, right? So like you should easily do both, $30 a month for Tinder Premium and for gym membership, ooh, $60 a month. ...means than paying the same amount for Tinder Premium. On top of this, Tinder may also cost you more money if you're one of the lucky few to actually get dates. And finally, this is ignoring potentially the biggest negative of all, which is the opportunity cost. With regard to time, think of the million other things you could be doing in your life that are 10 times better than swiping on dating apps. Even if you do cold approach, it'll give a far better rate of return, and at the very least, you'll conquer- uh, Only if you have good cold approach skills. If you don't, then you're not going to get good results from cold approach. 
approach anxiety and be able to develop your social skills. Anyway, that's the video guys. I hope this has served as a good reminder for why you should stay off the dating apps. If you've enjoyed this topic, check out my other video on online dating explaining five- Okay, so there we go. So again, I agree with this premise that online dating is very competitive for sure, right? But I just disagree with this conclusion that you should stay off dating apps, that you're not gonna be able to make it, no. Like, if you follow a good strategy, you have a good profile, right? You optimize your photos and you follow all the advice that I give you guys for free. Uh, you have a good text game, you have a good funnel going, and you're smart with your time. You're not sitting there swiping for hours, but you have Tinder gold, and you know maybe you do a little bit of messaging when you're in between sets of the gym or doing whatever we need to kill time. Uh, you can have a lot of success with online dating. So again, he's right about the premise, but completely wrong about the conclusion. All right, hopefully you guys found this video valuable. I have an open offer to the guy in the photos. I will happily help you improve your profile and actually get you results for free so hit me up thank you guys for watching smash the like button hit subscribe click the bell for notification and until next time